All right, yeah, Th thanks for the introduction. I will not bore you more with, with introduction stuff about myself. Um, but yeah, what I want to do today or now is to talk about um, classification and regression with LLMs coupled with a few insights from Kaggle competitions. And we already had a session earlier in the training session talking a little bit about our recent uh, LLM science exam competition results. It is, but this, this one is kind of more general about classification and regression with LLMs. Yeah, we have heard today a lot of different things about use cases around LLMs, and usually we talk about generative use cases. So um, we, we usually talk about like text generation, rock use cases, uh, labeling, agents, and so on and so forth. But I, what I want to do now at the end of, close to the end of the day is to take a step back and try to figure out if we can actually also use LLMs for more classical use cases, uh, no pun intended, like classification uh, that we have been doing uh, over the last few years, decades even already. So what actually about classification? And actually, simple text classification is what happens a lot in different kind of companies, businesses, and I have observed it a lot that this is a very, very popular use case in general. And what I want to explore now in this talk a little bit is whether we can also make some use of LLMs or Gen AI in general for text classification. So think about uh, of things like sentiment classification, document categorization, spam detection, topic classification, language detection, and many, many more. So just having a bunch of documents, needing to classify them into certain types of categories. The common way or how we have solved this the last couple of years was via supervised training most of the time. So meaning you have a bunch of labeled data, you train a model on the labeled data, predict it on the unlabeled data. Uh, Ten years ago, um, we were doing mostly this kind of bag of word approaches, meaning to build tabular data out of text corpora, building a large vocabulary, saying, okay, the, the word cat or dog is ten times, five times in this document, building a tabular model on top. Uh, nowadays, we would use a gradient-boosted uh, model and using that. Works decently well, but has been kind of replaced over the last couple of years with transformer models as the transformer architecture is now also present in all the LLMs, which is based on this attention is all you need paper. Um, and these transformer models are not new, but they have existed with like BERT, you might have heard of BERT models, Roberta, DBERTA is kind of the best for these kind of types of models. And um, just very simply on the right hand side, here we can see, um, we can see that, um, Okay, whatever. Uh, that how how these pre-trained models are, are trained. So you have a BERT model is uh, trained with so-called masked language models, which means that in on this large-scale pre-training, they are not um, trained as LLMs, as I will show on the next slide, but basically with like masking random parts of the input, and the model needs to learn to predict these random. Uh, tokens. So it would need in this what is an LLM and LLM is sample, it would need to learn to predict N or the LLM mask basically. So this means these are so called encoder models, so they can look forward and backward, which is very different to um, GPD models as, as, as shown on the next slide. So yeah, and but these models are not really usable out of the box, which is maybe one of the reasons why they are not as hyped as like LLMs nowadays, because you cannot do a lot with them out of the box, because they have been trained in this way. So usually there comes into play transform, um, transfer learning, so you fine tune them to a certain task and for classification is like one of these tasks, token classification, sequence to sequence, all these different kind of NLP use cases work really well when we fine tune. Um, these types of models. And the LLM way gives us now different opportunities. The first one, which is kind of new, is that, they, that this gives us opportunities to now do zero-shot classification. Which is why? Because these models have been trained in this kind of generative manner. 
next token prediction. So for the example here, when we talk about a LAMA model, this has been pre-trained on huge corpus of text, and they have been already always pre-trained to just do like next token prediction. So it would only want to predict is as the last or the next token, and then the next token, the next token, the next token. And these are only decoder models, which means they only look to the past and not to the future, which has advantages but also disadvantages. But the ad advantage is that it can give us zero-shot classification. We will explore this a little bit, but we can also still fine-tune them similar as BERT models for um, classification itself. In the rest of this talk, I want to go through a simple use case, which is based on uh, financial sentiment data, public data set from, uh, can be found on Google, Hugging Face Kaggle. Uh, it's a pretty commonly used sentiment data set, which has like similar to tweets, short text snippets, which give statements about uh, sentiments or like statements about earning reports and so on. And they have been hand labeled for negative, neutral and positive. So very classical uh, sentiment classification, but not easy as like only negative positive because this neutral makes it a bit tricky. We are only looking at those that have been 75% um, percent annotator agreement, which gives us 3,500 rows. With, um, and I split this manually into 80% training and 20% and validation. Um, here on the right hand side you can see a few samples like the company's profit totaled 570k in H1 2007 down 30% uh, year on year, was labeled as negative. Um, which means overall we have 60% neutral labels, 26% uh, uh, positive and 12% negative. And what I want to do now is that I want to start always when we do data science or machine learning projects, we should start with a baseline and try to improve this. But baseline would be very, very simplest baseline would be majority baseline only predicting neutral, meaning 60%, 62% accuracy in this case. How can we use LLMs now? What we could do is that we just ask an LLM, right? LLMs have this generative power. They are very good for this kind of zero-shot zero, zero um, tasks. So we could, um, a, a, a calls agent could just paste this content, uh, a call content, an email, whatever, into an LLM and ask the LLM, what do you think is the sentiment? Is it negative? Is it neutral? Is it positive? And it will give you it will give you actually a really good answer. So this is actually um, a neutral, the neutral example from the previous slide. And the 70P Llama model on H2 GPD gives you actually a really good prediction. I would classify this sentiment as neutral, and it even gives you kind of an explanation of why the model thinks this is the way. Um, but streamlining this is a little bit difficult, right? This is very useful for like quick checking, right? So you can just go there, paste it in, get the result. But making this really into a business process is a little bit tricky. The positive thing is no training is needed. We don't need labels. It is very easy to get started. And we have the side effect of having kind of interpretable results by these explanations. For example, in this case, the LLM really gives a nice explanation why it even thinks that it, this is neutral. But the prompt engineering can be very tricky. And but very important, as we have heard throughout several talks today, um, which means there needs to be some effort put into this prompt engineering. It is kind of, that makes it difficult to automate because also the outputs can be very different, right? So think of how would you automate this? You, would, you could check is there neutral in the output and then say this is neutral, but there could be also different things. It could say it is positive uh, and maybe neutral, or out of positive, negative, uh, um, neutral, I think it is positive, right? So it can even not say anything. It, it is very tricky to automate. There are definitely different tools, and I will not talk about this now, that can kind of optimize this output, maybe to a JSON format, maybe to a more strict format that can help there. But it is still runtime expensive because generation is expensive. And you still need some kind of evaluation because you want to, um, you still need to evaluate it in some way. 
There is actually a quite neat, simple trick to make ZeroShot a little bit more um, streamlined, uh, to, to streamline it a little bit, which you can do the following. Because as it is always just a next token prediction, you could put in here, your task is to analyze the message below and predict whether it has positive, negative, uh, a neutral. Here is the then return on the investment, blah, blah, blah. And then that sentiment is, now the LLM will try to predict the next token. And hopefully, as we are steering it dire directly into this direction, that it is hopefully now saying the sentiment is next token probability negative, positive, or neutral. Because that's what happens. In an LLM, gives you an output probability for the next token out of the whole vocabulary. And in Llama, for example, it's 32,000 tokens. So here, a distribution could look like, oh, it's now negative for 20%, positive next token probability would be 10%, neutral also 10%, and many, many other tokens would be the rest. But it is still tricky to see like what are the popular token probabilities. It could be also like POS or like uh, uh, some abbreviations of that. But that is uh, still a very simple trick and you can tune this a little bit with the prompt engineering to get like a good a logic distribution here that you can use to automatically streamline. And it is also way faster because you just need to, to generate a single token actually. You just need to generate a single next token and not like the full output. Um, you probably cannot read the code, but some people prefer code, like myself. And in the end, um, it is very simple to do. Um, you just take like the input, you tokenize it, you forward it, take the last token probability, and then just search for the index, uh, indi indices of the tokens, positive, negative, neutral, in these logits, and sort new, sort it by that way. So in this case, we would get for this previous example, or Actually, a different example here, we would get logits for negative close to seven, neutral close to seven, and then eight for positive. So in this case, this is a correct for this um, example. It would sort it that way and give positive the highest probability. So now, if we do this exact pro approach with exact this prompt, not tuning the prompt too much for the example we, we had before on the same validation data set, using a 7B model, zero shot, and a 13B Llama uh, model, we can already get to an accuracy of 75% uh, for both of these models. I also tried a 70B model, not really better there. Um, but as I said, there is definitely a lot of prompt tuning you can do to improve this. But it already gives you like, this is basically free, I would even say. Not free in a way, because, but this is free. This model exists. You don't need to train it. It is kind of free to give you this. Um, this 75% is already not, not too bad for such a use case. And you can definitely, if you spend a, little, a few iterations, you can definitely improve such a, such a use case. But now the question is, can we even fine-tune it, right? Um, if we think about this, we are just having like the model outputs a logic distribution. And now all we need, would need to do is map this logic distribution to just three outputs, right? So in this case, we would only need to train another classification head on top that maps us this, this output distribution of over 32,000 tokens to negative, neutral, positive. So we can just um, attach another custom head to this whole model and fine tune this. And we could even say what already works well, we could even say we are fixing the LLM and we are just training another head on top. This could be even something simple like a logistic uh, regression. This could be even a gradient boosted tree where we just learn on several outputs for this distribution, how shall we properly map it to this, to this negative, neutral, positive, instead of just taking hard-coded I'm only looking at positive, negative, neutral, because there's probably signal in some other tokens in this whole distribution for the prediction. But we can also fine tune the LLM combined with this head. So we can just do regular LoRa training of the, um, of the LLM combined with fine tuning this head. And um, 
you have probably heard that there is a tool like H2LLM Studio, and um, we have now added to this open source um, repository a new problem type, which exactly allows you to do this classification use case. And we also successfully used this in the LLM science exam competition on Kaggle. And it is very simple. You just need to upload a CSV there, um, start an experiment to predict the classification head or the classification label, and you can do the full fine tuning and um, usually get, get pretty decent results out of the box. Again, I did not do any tuning here, but um, I just ran a few experiments um, with actually also a 3B model, a 7B model and a 13B model um, on this training data set that I mentioned earlier. And we got very quickly to something like 94%, uh, 95% accuracy. Um, and here on the right-hand side, you can see the runtime. Uh, 0125 for the freebie, and this is not hours, this is actually minutes. Yeah? So this whole fine tuning on 2,000 samples on decent GPU, but even if it takes a couple minutes on a smaller GPU, right, this is, this is pretty, pretty doable. Of course, you need more labels because you need to train it on some, some label data, but even for the zero shot, you would need some labels because you need to properly validate it. So yeah, putting this into context, we can get really good here. You can see this is probably already kind of the theoretical limit because uh, larger models are not significantly better. But even with a 3B model, which is even smaller than the, the zero-shot models I, ha I had there, uh, you can get already, already really good, good results. Um, I have been always under the impression, because I mentioned it in the beginning, or my, my suspicion was that when LLMs came out, that they will be mostly useful only for these generative use cases, but to fine tune them for classification, because always historically GPT-2 was really bad for training these models, um, for example, um, was that the BERTA will still be, or BERT models will still uh, heavily outperform it. But we have now seen over the last months for example, on Kaggle, that actually people train these LLMs for classification, but also for regression um, to, with really, really great results. So, um, and they have also these kind of properties that you can even cache certain parts of the input because they are decoder models, so they have also other advantages. So, for example, uh, we will have another session in a, in, a, in, a, in a minute revealing the results of this um, competition, which is our community competition of this, um, of this event here, where the task was to predict whether which of the different LLMs or an, a question-answer pair to which LLM it belongs uh, was a classification use case. And I submitted in the beginning, right after the competition launched, a benchmark for the competitors to like benchmark themselves against. And all I did was just upload the CSV file to LLM Studio, run this simple baseline model and submit it. And even though I dropped now, this is not correct, the 11th, um, it gave a good benchmark and it was like rank one for a week until people caught up and this took me just an hour literally pressing a few clicks and ending up with this model. And also, I read today in the beginning, we will see the private leaderboard a little bit later, but in the beginning, the people top on the public leaderboard all used, or most of them used actually LLMs uh, for classification, which kind of really shows the usefulness of those models for classification. Also, we participated, I, I, the title here is classification and regression. We participated in an, another competition, which was actually a regression use case. And instead of just having now a classification head, you can have a single head with like predicting a, a continuous output and you can do the exact same thing and it also works, works really well. And for this um, science exam competition, it was classification where we ended first and there we also uh, exclusively used 7B and 13B models for classification, where it was like predicting whether an answer is correct or not. And there we could also use all these caching decoder tricks that make this really, really useful. So yeah, with that, that that's my talk. Uh, thank you, everyone. And if there are any more questions, we can have them later. Thank you.